those that are well endowed with funds and skills and capacities, they speed ahead when there are new opportunities arising. And those that are less well endowed, they still work on the basics. And as a result, the general digital divides keep widening as we speak. Hello, this is the weekly Tradecast, a podcast brought to you by UNCTAD, the UN's trade and development body. I'm Sarah Toms. We're exploring how major events are shaping trade and development and how that affects billions of people around the world. This week, we're looking at inequalities in technology for least developed countries and how they must close the gap to benefit from the digital economy. During COVID, technology helped us to combat the virus and ride out the crisis. With pandemic restrictions in place, much of the world went online to stay in touch and to work, study and shop from home. Many of those habits are here to stay, but not all countries and economies were equally prepared to go digital. As the online economy grows, the technology gap is also growing for least developed countries. Skills, support and infrastructure are just some of the pressing needs. Joining us now to explain all these challenges and the tech crunch and what can be done is Torbjorn Fredriksson, head of the e-commerce and digital economy branch at UNCTAD. Now, he says he's quite cautious about joining various social media platforms himself, but he's convinced that digitalization offers a unique opportunity to speed up progress on the sustainable development goals. Well, personal skepticism and professional optimism then, Torbjorn. Welcome to the show. To start, let's have a look at the main reasons for the digital divide and why is it widening? Well, thank you, Sarah, for having me. You know, the world has been uh, digitizing for quite a while now and at a very high pace. In fact, the pace is quickening as we speak. And going digital requires a lot of action taken by a country and by the various participants mm. in a country, the governments, the, the people, the businesses, etc. It, it involves infrastructure, as you mentioned, digital skills, we need to create trust in the online environment, otherwise people and businesses will not use it. But using digital technology also costs money. And we all know that countries are unequally endowed with funds. And because we are starting this journey at very unequal levels, mm. and those that are well endowed with the funds and skills and capacities, they speed ahead when there are new opportunities arising. And those that are less well endowed, they still work on the basics and as a result, the general digital divides keep widening as right. we speak. Now, why is it so important for least developed countries to be part of the digital economy? What happens when this gap widens? Well, you know, we can see the whole world right now is in the process of digital transformation. It is affecting everything from the business world to how we educate people, how countries are providing services to their citizens. And we saw that this process really accelerated during COVID when people realized we really need to use digital opportunities to cope with the restrictions that were in place. And only some countries were able to do that in full, whether, whether it was for teleworking, going online for shopping, or getting uh, social services from the governments, etc. And LDCs, or the least developed countries, that were less equipped to take part of this, they fell behind in this context. We could see that the economic resilience here was much higher in those countries that were digitally ready. And that means that they were less able to participate in the global value chains to reach local, regional and global markets through e-commerce and also to provide government services. What does that mean in real terms then for real people? It means a lot. You know, you could see that uh, there was a growing demand in many least developed countries for using digital services, but not all companies were able to respond to that demand. And partly because of lack of infrastructure, partly because of difficulties in finding skills to scale up operations. So we saw a lot of other services developing, for instance, for food supply, with people who were unable to go to the markets or to meet with people because they wanted to stay away from the risk of contracting the virus. But if it was possible to order online, they could have their food, so there are the uh, goods and services delivered digitally. Uh, that was a big help. But not all countries and not all people were able to do so. So that means that they were more exposed. 
What impact did COVID have on developing countries and how does that compare to developed countries? We really need more data to fully get the the big picture. But we have some information from various sources. And we can see, for instance, that many least developed countries try to catch up on the digital space during COVID in order to be able to provide the services needed. But still, we see that the patterns that evolved during the COVID period were very different for different parts of the least developed countries. Mm -hmm. We can see that the biggest increase in online shopping, for instance, between the period 2017 and 2021 was seen in Myanmar. It went from 3% of the population shopping online in 2017 to 20% in 2021, an impressively fast right. growth. And we saw some other African LDCs that also saw this kind of increase, but not to the same extent. At the same time, many other least developed countries didn't see much of an increase at all. And some even saw a reduction in the mm-hmm. share of people shopping online. So it varied a lot. And if we look at trade, of course, because everyone in the world went digital. Uh, There was a growing need for ICT goods. Everything from semiconductors, all the gadgets that we use, it's computers, it could be mobile phones during COVID, whereas trade started to decline. But you didn't see that kind of impact in the least developed countries. One thing that happened during COVID was, of course, that anything that could be digitally delivered did much better than things that could not be digitally delivered. But again, we saw the the rapid increase globally and in in rich countries. What sort of help do least developed countries need then and who should be providing it? Well, I think the first thing is, of course, that the member states themselves need to put digitalization as a priority. And this is happening. We could see that, for instance, in the latest Ankhden Ministerial, that digitalization for development was seen as one of the top three challenges of the world in order to create inclusive and sustainable development. And that means that the first step is for countries to really make up their mind, what do they want to do to become more ready to participate in the digital economy? And here, it's quite a challenge because you cannot just focus on connectivity, but it's infrastructure, it's skills development. It is it's about enabling businesses to grow in this new sector to make sure that they have access to finance. It's about having a legal and regulatory framework that is conducive to digital activities. In many least developed countries, they lack support, they lack uh, resources in many of these areas. Mm. And at the same time, it involves many different ministries. So it requires institutional coordination, both between the ministries, and it also requires interaction with the other stakeholders, like the private sector and the civil society. And of course, looking at the current situation after the pandemic, now with the war in Ukraine, many budgets are strained. So we see that the poorest countries, they need particular efforts from the international community to help them deal with many of these challenges. And as we see the rapid pace of change, there is an urgency in this context. So we see that many least developed countries can greatly benefit from more international financial and technical support. We need to have collaboration at the regional level. And some of the new rules that we need to create have to be done at the global level. So the UN has an extremely important role to play here. The UN is gathering a major ministerial conference in the beginning of March this year to discuss how to accelerate sustainable development in the least developed countries. And harnessing digital opportunities in this context is very much on the agenda. There is still a massive need to do better because this is going to be one of the main challenges for the future. Certainly sounds it, Torbjorn. Thank you to Torbjorn Fredrickson for being this week's guest. Tune into the Weekly Tradecast next week and every week for more insights on the most pressing issues around the world of trade and development. And there's even more on our website, unctad.org. I'm Sarah Toms in Geneva. Goodbye for now.